president who lied to parliament and said he was not going to initiate negative interest rates. And then when he went to Davos and came back, changed his mind, and they announced negative interest rates, the Nikkei went up. But now it just keeps going down. In Shanghai, down a bit too. Hang Seng, it. Markets over in Europe, down. And oil. Whoop, oil was way up. Oil was way down. Closed down. Gold. Boom. Bam. Right at the end of the day. Up some 15 bucks. And the Dow. Whew. The Dow was way down. Yeah, well over 250 points. First it was up. Then it was down. Closed down 211 points. Not very good. U.S. stocks tumbled with the NASDAQ 100 plunging to its lowest in five months as disappointing earnings sent consumer and technology shares lower. The NASDAQ was down 3.25%. Remember, this thing was at 5,000 just some 16 years ago to the date. And now you see where it is. We had the, I uh, mentioned the Japanese index fell 1.4%. Equities have fallen for four of the past five weeks. As losses among exporters wiped out gains incurred after the Bank of Japan unexpectedly bolstered monetary stimulus on January 29th. Unexpectedly bolstered. Unexpectedly rigged the markets. Unexpectedly have killed capitalism. Unexpectedly, or maybe not unexpectedly, because it's been a long trend since the time Jesus Christ beat the money changes out of the temple. It's bankism. It's just more obvious now. And when you read the reports coming out, and they give you, like that one I just read from Bloomberg, not a mention of the job numbers in it. That's right. The job numbers here in the states came out, and they're not good. They were expecting about 190,000 to 200,000 jobs came in around 151,000. And then you look at all the jobs that were created in retail. How could this be? Retail? Oh, Kohl's stock takes a beating on disappointing holiday results. Oh, that, that's why they had more retail jobs? Oh, how about all those layoffs in Macy's and Walmarts? Hey, Ralph Lauren posts 40% profit fall for holiday quarter. Yeah, that'll give you some retail jobs. As of the end of January 2016, this is according to the Hamilton Project, our nation faces a jobs gap of 1.8 million jobs the number needed to return to pre-recession employment as a share of the population. Fundamentals of the economy are sound, folks. So, the game is changing and so is the language. Citigroup, world economy trapped in death spiral. Stronger U.S. dollar, weaker oil commodity prices, weaker world trade, petrodollar liquidity, weaker emerging market growth, and it goes on and on. Significant and synchronized global recession and a proper modern-day equity market, end quote. 
The world appears to be trapped in a circular reference death spiral, spiral city strategist said. Gee, check this out. Today's Financial Times. Why more people think a U.S. recession is around the corner. Check the lingo. The dollar is falling sharply, while the markets bet ever more confidently that there will be no rate increases from the Federal Reserve in 2016. Driving this situation is a rising belief that the U.S. could be slipping into a recession this year, a possibility that only a few weeks ago was regarded as negligible, writes John Authors. What arrogance, what arrogance. Negligible may be the nimwits, huh? Negligible may be the, the business media prostitutes who are always trying to jerk the market higher with their... Bullshit detected. Take precautions. Yeah. Take precautions. Now they're starting to talk about what you know we've been saying now when we issued our top trends for 2016. Global recession. Ended this broadcast, Trends in the News, on December 30th. The panic of 2016. We're five weeks into the year and it's been down all the way. But gold is going up. Think back. I mentioned this little lying guy over there with the Bank of Japan after he leaves Davos, he shoves negative interest rates into the system when he said to Parliament, when he lied to Parliament, when he lied to Parliament, how do you say lie in Japanese? That he wasn't going to go for negative interest rates. And then remember we had Ray Dalio at Davos, Dalio, Davos, and Draghi. Dalio calling for more stimulus to boost the markets. The biggest hedge fund operator in the world, or right up there, if not the biggest. And then Draghi, the Goldman Sachs cat, yeah, who engineered Greece getting into the Euro group when they weren't qualified, when he was with Goldman Sachs and now the ECB president, after Dalio complains about the soft market need for more stimulus, Draghi comes out and says, hey, I could stimulate. Wait till March. Go back. Go back to January 21st when all this began to happen and look how gold has gone up from there. Over 70 bucks. That's right. Because the people that are watching this, like myself and others, see where it's heading. They're flooding the market with fake money. End of story. Conoco cuts dividend in face of gloomy outlook for oil. Why gloomy outlook? That's pessimism, man. That's the president said, that's pessimism. What gloomy out? Don't be a gloom and doom, Conoco. Conoco Phillips has become the first large U.S. oil production com company to cut its dividends in response to the decline in oil prices, yesterday announcing a 66% reduction as it attempts to shore up finances. Oil route points to broader woes. Why these negative people? You got to accentuate the positive and eliminate the negative. This is pessimism. You should be reported to Obama. 
Yeah, he came out today and said how great that low 4.9% unemployment rate is. The reason the unemployment rate went down is because once you're off benefits and you're no longer collecting unemployment and you can't find a job, they don't count you anymore in the USSA. Hey, they picked that one up from Stalin, maybe, huh? Anyway, few economists see recession, but forces driving energy slump threaten to infect U.S. A oh, few economists. Yeah. Few economists that you listen to. Few economists that are on the payroll, Jack. Worries about energy-related bankruptcies and loan defaults also are helping to tighten financial conditions weighing on the broader swath of the economy. <laughs> Economic gauges already indicate an industrial recession. The Federal Reserve reported this month that its index of industrial production has fallen 1.8% over the year ended December, a drop that has always been accompanied by a recession since the 1970s. They put this fact right at the end. Now, let's, let's, let's see if we could add industrial production, right? That's making things. Duh, right? Yeah. What was adorable good orders down? Well, well. Minus 5.1%. Guess what, folks? When you look at the job numbers that came out, nice little boost in manufacturing. Just like there's a nice little boost in retail. They're making this crap up. These facts that they're pumping out of our system are as phony as the ones coming out of China. And why not, man? You're doing business with the communists. You got a fascist government that robbed us of our rights every time they can, gave us too big to fail, tarp, and every other way to screw us and build up the big guys. Yeah, them too big to fail's 40% bigger. It's perfect. The fascist liars with the communists. It's Globalization. Engine maker Cummins hit by slowing truck sales. Engine maker Cummins said its fourth quarter profit plunged 64% due to anemic commodity prices and slower growth in developing markets. I'm mentioning this because they're going to say that the U.S. trade deficit widened in December as a strong dollar and weak global demand continued to weigh on exports. But wait a minute. Obama said he was going to double exports. Well, he lies about everything else. He can lie about that. Take it easy, Salenti. Now, wait a minute. Cummings isn't exporting not because the dollar is strong. It's because global demand is weak. The Commerce Department said today the trade gap rose 2.7% to $43.4 billion. November's trade deficit was revised down to $42.2 billion from a previous report of $42. Huh. Lackluster global demand and a higher dollar. Investors punish Credit Suisse as losses highlight bank sector pain. Wow, son of a gun. Investors have sent U.S. financial stocks down more than 11% just since the beginning of this year. European bank equities nearly down 20%. Globally, the financial sector is the worst performing in the MSCI World Index I could go on and on and on. About $350 billion has been wiped off the value of the largest 90 U.S. financial stocks since the start of the year. Has nothing to do 
with a strong dollar. Nothing. It's a global slowdown. Remember yesterday I read about with the Chinese are buying up everything, Chinese firms chase deals abroad, and how much it's increased already this year? Well, folks, the Chicago Stock Exchange said a Chinese investor group agreed to acquire it. Nah, we got wars to fight. We got people to kill. Oh, yeah. It's America. Think I'm kidding? Five years on, West ponders another Libyan intervention. And the language, Libya's <laughs> one after another, they're saying, for example, since the fall of dictator Muammar Gaddafi, they have this trouble. Not the fall, the overthrow, the murder. Oh, and talking about murder, Hitler was on with Bernie Sanders, fraud with fraud, yep. Fraud, 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 fraud whatever they are, you know. Who's that guy? Freud. Freud, frauds, yeah, it's perfect, politics. And they're arguing which one is more of a progressive. Both of them. Both Bernie and Hitlery. That Gaddafi has to go. And now America's going back. Isn't it wonderful? So the markets are in turmoil. Panic's setting in. Gold prices are going up. Remember what I said yesterday. Gold has to go over 1,200, stay there for a while and move higher. When it goes over 1,400, I say it's going to hit the 2,000 mark again. We'll get right near it. Didn't hit it quite the last time. It got very close. This time it's going to hit it and go over. The panic is on. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's Trends in the News.